Hey developers, so today we're gonna look at seven VS Code extensions that you may not have heard of, but are very valuable. So these are gonna make things a lot easier for you. Now these are extensions that I use every day, so I recommend them. So we're gonna go through them one by one. At any time, you can take a look in the description. They're listed there as well, so you can pick them up. Before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. I just wanna take a moment and thank our sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably love domain names and you love to buy ones that are short and relevant, but also most importantly available. And that's what's really cool about .tech domains. There's a ton of really cool domains available and the .tech domain is broad enough that you can kind of understand that this is technology related as well. A lot of really cool sites are using .tech domains like hollywood.tech, viacom.tech, even personal sites like austinevans.tech. So if you guys are interested, and you want to search for a really cool domain name, go to go.tech slash Eric, and then search for your domain name. If you end up buying it, you actually get up to 80% off on one year and five year domains. So go to go.tech slash Eric, and go ahead and pick up that domain name. Thanks. Okay, so we are going to start with the first extension. Now I have the latest version of VS Code installed. Um, by the way, I'm using the Synthwave 84 theme. So if you want to know what that is, that's what it is. Just look up Synthwave 84. So I'm going to click my little extensions. And the first one I want to talk to you about is VS Code Faker. So basically this generates fake data for names, addresses, lore, Ipsum, commerce, and much more. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to open up a file. Let's say I wanted to just create a fake company name. If I just do fake company here, I can actually hit um, this uh, control shift P or if you're a Mac, I believe it's like command shift P and you can just choose type in faker and it has a whole bunch of stuff. It has faker address, faker commerce, faker database, faker date. In this case, we're going to do faker company and then we're just going to do, I don't know, we, let's do a catchphrase. Cool. So now we can see here, uh, oops, I actually got rid of it, but right here, so integrated secondary migration. So it's just some random text that threw in there, but we can use this just to generate a whole bunch of just random stuff, which makes it really nice. Let's say we do faker, I don't know, address. Let's say uh, country code, I don't know, street address. So there it is. It just went ahead and inserted it in. So that is pretty helpful. So let's look at our next one and let's take a look at Quoco. So Quoco is a live scratch pad for JavaScript. I'm a big fan of them. I've actually been using them for a while and uh, I've used them uh, there's also another one that uh, another plugin by the same people who create Quoco to help with uh, testing. So I've used that one as well. But let's just take a look at Quoco right now. And uh, so what you can do is we'll just open up a random file. I'll use the same one I did before. Once again, I'm going to hit Command Shift P, and I'm typing Quoco, and I'm do new JavaScript file, and it opens it up here. And you can see now we can actually get some live information out of this. So, so if I'll do const, I don't know, company, and I'll put in Eric, one, two, three, um, and then I'll do, I don't know, const times five. And if I'll do, let's say four, let I E equal zero, I is less than times, I plus plus, just a simple for loop. And I'm gonna console log out company. And you can see right here, it gives you a live preview of everything inside of what it did. So you can see exactly what it's doing. It also gives you some output here at the bottom. You can see here, it says all the console logs. So you can kind of play around with this and use it. And also has this little green, uh, this gutter they call it in the left-hand side where you can also see like if the commands you wrote are correct or not. Um, you also have this ability if you type something in, let's say it's an object. And it has, I know, Eric, one, two, three, age 35. You can do slash slash question mark. And that'll actually just, you can put that on any line and it will put, it'll tell you exactly what's in the object itself. So you can actually not just do this in your own scratch pad JavaScript files, but you can do it in your own project. So if you're in the middle of a project and you wanna see kind of what the expected outcome is, you can use Quoco and get it. And this is actually really perfect for me for doing tutorials because then I can just show exactly the output 
in real time. And you may have seen this before. So yeah, definitely check out Quoco. It's, they have a free plan and then they also have a paid plan. So you get more features with the paid plan, of course, which is the one I use. So let's take a look at uh, another, let's, let's, let's create an eight, Let's create an index.html file here. So I'm gonna create a new file, index.html. And I'm gonna use just a, with, with built into VS Code, we know we have Emmet. So I can just type in HTML colon five, and just gives us this nice little working space to start with. But what happens if I wanted to, I don't know, I'm gonna do a hello world here, but I'm gonna wanna insert like a placeholder image. Now there's so many different placeholder image sites out there. You may have heard of a few, but did you know that there's an extension to grab them? So instead of Quoco, I'm gonna put in placeholder here. And there's this one called placeholder images, it has over 20,000 downloads, and you can just type whatever you want in, and it gives you a whole bunch of dummy sites to insert in placeholder images. So I'm gonna go back to my index.html, I'm gonna try it out. So I'm gonna to go to a blank space here. I'm gonna do my control shift P, I'm gonna type in, in uh, placeholder. And it says right here, placeholder images, insert new images. And I have now an ability to look at dummy images, fake images, please, lorem flicker, lorem pi pixel, place kitten, place skull. I don't know, you could try, let's try unsplash it. And you can put the, the width, I don't know, 300, the height, 300, random image, sure, yes. Or I put no, I think there, grain scale, no. Blur, uh, yes. You can even like crop it and then you can either copy to the clipboard or insert it. Let's say we copy it to the clipboard and I paste it. So there it is. So now I created a random image just to really quickly add into my HTML site, which is really cool. So I don't have to go and like try to remember what the site is and how, what is it slash 300 slash 300? Like what's the query params? It does it all for me. So that's uh, really neat and you can use it over and over again. So another thing that probably go well with this is now that we've created this index.html file and I kind of want to look at it. So there's this neat feature called live server. So if you go to extensions and type in live server, there's a bunch of these too. And I've tried a few, um, this one works pretty well. Live server, it launches a development local server with live reload features and static and dynamic images. So uh, it works, even works with PHP apparently. So you can kind of see here, you can uh, run, run it at any time. You, there's a go live serve button at the bottom of the page. Um, and you can open, you can also right click and open with live server. And you can, you can run it a few ways. So let's see here if it works. So I guess I could right click on it, open with live server. And it opens in a different window here, but here it is. So it went ahead and opened. You can see here's my hello world and my blurry image, my placeholder image. So yep, it works as expected. You can also do control shift P and then do live server here, open with live server here. And it just does it again. Here's another, you can see it did another random image in there, which is great. I wonder if I take out this blur, I wonder what it'd look like in this gravity north. I'm gonna save it. And now I'm gonna run open live server again. Okay, you can see here now it just created this picture. It's fine. Uh, so cool, so that's an easy way like inside your apps to create a quick live server. I've also used this one, uh, there's a few of them. There is browser preview. And so I've used browser preview if you look in the extensions. I don't think it's as good as live server, but I've used it with my Angular projects, my view, view projects. You can actually set it like a, a colon, a number to go for. So if you want to do import 8080 or port whatever you want, it'll automatically do that too. But when I'm just kind of creating a quick site, this works great for me. All right, so I have a few more to talk about here. Let's look at bracket colorizer. So if we go into our extensions and we look for bracket colorizer, it's the bracket pair colorizer. This is kind of an oldie but goodie, but it's worth mentioning again, if you haven't heard of it. So it kind of just colors your brackets different colors so it's easier to identify with. So if we go back to here, our Quoco file, but we create a function and I'll call it Eric. And inside this function, we have an if statement, if true. We have another 
another bracket. You can see this one is yellow and this one is purple. So it's just a little bit easier to identify the different brackets so you don't get confused, which uh, I definitely do that sometimes myself. Cool, so another extension that I really, I'm going through these extensions really quickly. So if any time you're confused, make sure you click the pause button, you look in the description below and see what the extensions are. And also leave a comment, I didn't mention this yet, leave a comment with your favorite extensions or if you've had any problems with these extensions, just leave a comment below, I'd love to hear it. I know everybody loves extensions, so I thought I would do a few of these. So here's another one that's really popular is, and I've used this a lot, I don't know if I've done a video on this, it's the auto rename tag. So it automatically renames your paired HTML XML tags for you, which becomes pretty handy. So if I'm back in this index file, let's say I create a div and I say hi there, but I'm like, oh no, this is supposed to be an H3. So I can just go to this div here and type H3 and it automatically changes it for me. So that is the auto rename tagger. It's really simple, but it's pretty powerful. Oh, I didn't really mention this as one of the extensions, but I use the Vim extension. Uh, Vim is so super powerful. It's actually getting better too. It's it's a, It allows me to just use my Vim key bindings to move around. I didn't want to get into this too much, but it's just an easy way of doing things. Let's talk about uh, one more, and that is Calculate. So this is kind of an interesting one. If I just want to do a really quick calculation, Let's say I want to do like a thousand times three, 323. I can highlight this and what I need to do is go to extensions. I'll look for one called calculate. Here it is here. And it just, uh, you can select some math and evaluate it. That's as simple as it is here. I'll do times. So if I do times here and you don't need to have the equals here, but I just two, two numbers, I'll highlight it. And you can see right here, it shows you, Quoco will actually do it too depending on what you're doing. But if you wanna do calculate, it'll actually show it as well. So here's one, two, three, two, three, zero. So it's just another extension to do like quick calculations. I think calculate has a few more things Quoco won't do, but it's just nice to have it right here and you can see it. Cool, so that is my extensions. We looked at Quoco, the auto rename tag, the placeholder images, live server, uh, bracket colorizer, the um, faker, calculate, also one more. I forgot to mention, if you go here and you, if you're like me and have problems spelling sometimes, there's a really cool um, spell checker. If you go to spell checker right here, and it's called code spell checker, just install this and now anytime you do comments in your code, it'll spell check it for you. Like this is a comment, miss bleh. So it'll kind of highlight it. If you, if you go over it, it says an unknown word. So this is really helpful when you're doing comments. So if you do weird things that it doesn't understand, uh, weird words, then you can uh, you can catch those so they don't get committed to your code base. There's also, I believe there's even, you can even get uh, your inside GitHub or season inside Git, you can get hooks that do spell checks that will prevent you from merging or prevent you from creating your commits with misspelled words. You can even go that far if you want, but that's, that's a different video for a different time. So let me know if you guys love these different extensions as much as I do. If you do, leave a comment below. And if you like these type of videos, make sure you click that like button, smash that subscribe button, and you'll be seeing some more videos, videos, I think they're this way, coming and uh, click on those, help me out. I appreciate it, thanks.